So we have two identical parts. If you measured them with a pair of calipers, you couldn't find the difference. They were printed on the same printer at the same time, in the same cycle, with the same material and the same settings. But the difference is, one of them is very weak and broke real easily. And the other one I can't break with my bare hands. It worked a little better than I thought. I really thought I was going to be able to break it, but I can't. What are the differences between these? How did we do this? As you've probably been thinking for just a few seconds, how did we go about doing that? Well, if you can't find any differences on the outside, then certainly you can find differences on the inside. So here's the original part. Let's go ahead and take this to our slicer and see exactly why he broke. Now, as it drops in here, what I'm gonna do is generate automatic supports. Notice we have some supports there on the bottom. And then I'm gonna run the prepare print. Let's go down to the exact place it broke. Now notice right here, he is building this wall or this boss on top of one thing the very, the very base of it is going to be infill. So that's not a lot of material to be laying material down onto. It's not touching a lot of material. There's not going to be a lot of bonding there. Now, as you come up, you can see that's the first layer. We asked for four. Our second one actually comes in just a little past that. So that's already not great. And then it's going to start building right on top of those very weak top layers. And so even though we add a radius, it might give us a little more surface tension to start with a little more surface area, but there's no way it'll ever really give us a strong part. So now here we're back in Fusion. We started off with our model, our normal model, the one the customer left. Now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this model, rename this one modified. And we're gonna follow along in this timeline below to save some time. Now the first thing I did was delete the bottom. I made a 45 degree angle blended that into a radius so I get a similar look but I get no support material on the outside. That could have been as steep as 55 maybe even 60 degrees to avoid support material and keep the look like a natural radius but you look when I flip in between these models uh, it's very hard to notice. Next thing I defeatured the top. This allows me to shell the inside of the part. Uh, notice this is why it broke right because this is just hanging over nothing or infill. Because this, what we're looking at uh, after we, after we uh, shell this, this is, this is basically how the, the slicer is looking at it with wall thicknesses. And so that's not going to be very strong. There's not a lot of support under there. But now uh, we're modeling the inside of the part to get a good print. The first thing we want to do is take this feature and extrude it all the way down to the bottom of the part. That way, that thing is always connected to the shell or the outside perimeter of this part. Those are also very quick to 3D print opposed to the inside when he's trying to add all of that infill. So you're gonna save a lot of time here. But if you had other features in here, maybe this part was squeezed or it, it was under torsion or something like that, you can 3D model any kind of support you want on the inside and it'll be printed like a wall or a shell and give you a lot of strength. So this is not just for bosses that come through layers, but this can be added in any way through the part. This wall thickness, we chose that by saying we have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle times however many shells we have, whether it's eight or six, that goes for the top layers and the bottom layers. That pretty much handles our part. We added radiuses everywhere to make sure uh, that all of those breakpoints are as secure as possible. And now we're going to take this model, import it into our slicer, so the top of this looks fantastic. He's got all the profile passes. And then notice those passes, they go all the way through the part. We only have a little bit of support material inside so that we can print that top layer. We only used about 5%. That's probably more than enough. You could probably get away with no support material on the inside if you really want to save more material. But notice that feature comes all the way up through your part, keeping that feature very strong.
So let's say you get your first part and it's awesome, right? It comes out, it, it's way stronger than you ever anticipated. Uh, you try to break it maybe on YouTube and you can't in front of everybody and everything. And you can't break it because it's it, it beats your expectations, right? And so you say, well, now I'm gonna run production because I got it all set up. So you drop 30 in here on the build plate or 20 and you run those 20 parts. And then what you find out is you're right back to square one. Uh, they're all breaking again. And you're wondering, what did I do wrong? The profile was perfect, the part was great. But then you think about maybe when that extruder goes around and starts printing each individual layer on all of those parts, by the time it makes itself all the way back around, uh, that first layer has cooled down. And now it's dropping a fresh hot layer onto a cold layer. And so your layer adhesion is gonna suffer. It can't be as strong as if it was still hot and adding those layers. In other words, that prototype came out great. But when you try to run 30 of them, and they're not gonna be as strong. So what I do is instead of running them uh, all at the same time, simultaneously, I run them sequentially. In other words, I space them out so the extruder has enough room to complete a part before he moves over to the next one. Sometimes that means I can only get maybe 10 or 15 parts on a build platform, or maybe just five or two, but those parts are gonna come out fantastic. And you're not gonna have to worry about any layer adhesion problems. So we hope you learned something in this video. If you did, or if you'd like to see something different, comment and let us know below. In the meantime, subscribe. We appreciate you watching and we'll catch you next time.